dear devotees yesterday i introduced the leela of shri krishna sending uddhav ji to braj to meet the gopis i explained to you that shri krishna has many forms and they span the spectrum from pure madhurya meaning pure sweetness of divine love with no mix or hint of all mightiness that would restrict the flow of that divine love or inhibit the behavior of any devotee with him so on one end of the spectrum you have shri krishna of braj shri radha krishna of braj and on the other end of the spectrum you have lakshmi narayan mahavishnu shri krishna's pure almighty form where all of that madhurya has been subsided it's still there he's the still the same krishna but the lovingness is subsided and now just the almightiness pure almightiness is revealed that is his aishwarya roop and in between as you transition from less madhurya to more aishwarya meaning less lovingness to more almightiness shri krishna has many forms in between just the main ones that we generally talk about are shri krishna when he was in mathura then more almighty with more restriction of that prem is shri krishna of dwarika more towards the almighty side is shri krishna of saket lok whom we call bhagwan ram and full almightiness with no revelation no outward revelation of the divine prem that is shri krishna of baikunth lok whom we call vishnu narayan all are shri krishna but he's revealing himself in different forms and he gives diff a different type of bliss and a different type of interaction to his devotees depending which form they worship him in so it does matter what form you worship him although all the forms are his and you will attain him by worshiping any of those forms but it matters because the experience you will get will differ like if you go to the supreme court where your mother sits as a supreme court justice you can't demand your mother to treat you the way she does at home right not in that situation you may argue but it's my same mother i'm her daughter i'm her son why can't i no not in that situation when she comes home then you can have full freedom to quarrel with her joke with her get a hug from her she can feed you right in your mouth you can have all these loving interactions with your mother but not in the court room it's not allowed so if someone says oh it doesn't matter all the forms are one yes they are one but it matters it makes a difference which type of relationship do you want that's that should determine which form of shri krishna you worship after god realization also saints are classified according to what form of shri krishna they worshiped so you have gyani saints and bhakta saints this is the first major division keep in mind i'm not saying one is better and one is lower they've all attained shri krishna but in a different way but we have to appreciate the differences in their experience the gyani has attained formless shri krishna shri krishna who is not manifesting or revealing any of his powers outwardly 
This is called a jnani saint. And a bhakta saint, this includes all the saints who have attained Shri Krishna in any of his sakar forms, any of his personal forms, anywhere along the spectrum from Mahavishnu to Radha Krishna, and anywhere in between all those forms, all the forms of God. Anyone who attains God in any form is called a bhakta saint. And if you attain formless God, you're called a jnani saint. Because dvaivava brahmano rupe murtan chaiva murtan cha. Ved tells us that God has two main aspects, without form and with form. So there's two main categories of saints. Those who have attained God without a form, those who have attained God with a form. There are accordingly two main paths. The path of Gyan that takes you to formless God and the path of Bhakti that takes you to the personal form of God. Now let's leave the Gyani aside. They have no experience after merging into God because they have no mind, body or senses. And the soul without those faculties doesn't experience anything. Technically they've merged into formless God who is the ocean of bliss but they are not aware of their own blissful state once they merge into God. So leave the jnani saints aside. Bhakta saints are also further categorized according to which form they've attained. So those who attain Shri Krishna in his pure almighty form they are still called bhakta saints. But those who have attained him in his forms where he's revealing some of or more of or the maximum of his divine love, those are called rasik saints, rasik mahapurush. When Ved says raso vai saha, God is ras, means he is the very form of the nectar of divine love. Ved tells us that in order to give that ras, Radha and Krishna, although they are one, they appear in two forms to do leelas, krida, to do plays. So they can give that ras to their devotees and enjoy that ras themselves. So the ras is revealed in its maximum form, in its most richest form, in the leelas of Radha Krishna. And it's reveal it begins to be revealed in the leelas of Ram. It's more revealed in leelas of Dwarikadhi Shri Krishna, more revealed in the leelas of Mathuradhi Shri Krishna and the maximum in Brajwali Shri Krishna's leelas. So you understand we have all these classifications of saints depending which type of bliss they enjoy. And when a saint descends on earth, they represent that type of bliss and teach the soul's devotion to that form of Shri Krishna to attain what they've attained. Now Shri Krishna, as I mentioned yesterday, he left Braj, right? Wrong. He's omnipresent. Wo sarva vyapak hai, kaha jayega? Kaise jayega? <laughs> Asambhav hai. Shri Krishna cannot leave anywhere. He can't leave your heart. He can't leave this microphone. He can't leave Braj. The idea that he could leave somewhere and go somewhere else is impossible. He's always everywhere. Only a saint perceives that and knows that to be true. The gopis are saints. So do you think they're separated from Shri Krishna when he went to Mathura? No. I explained yesterday that 
that was only with his visible form, the form we could all see. In that form, Sri Krishna left and went to Mathura, later to Dwarika. So for us, Sri Krishna was no longer in Braj, but for the gopis, he was still there. Their divine saints, Rasik Mahapurush. So they can never be separated from him. But Sri Krishna has many tasks to perform when he comes here. He wanted to reveal the ras of those braj leelas. He wanted to reveal the ras of those relationships, vatsalya bhav, sakhya bhav, madhurya bhav. He wanted to reveal all of that, but he also wanted to reveal the bliss of Mathuradhish, his form. He also wanted to reveal the bliss of his form as Dwarikadhish. So he had to go and reveal those forms and do some other work too, fighting Mahabharat war, telling Gita. All of these things were pre-planned and he had to do them. So after doing Maharas, he left Braj and he went to Mathura. Some people wonder, over there in Mathura, Shri Krishna was the king. Not He made Ugrasen the king, but Shri Krishna was viewed as the leader, the ruler. And when he went to Dwarika, he established a whole new city and he ruled over there. And he had 16,108 queens. 16,108. People wonder why did he leave Radha and go and get married to the queens in Dwarika. Okay, let's rewind. You should, you should already be able to answer this question. That's his other roop, right? So that would be like saying, why did Krishna marry Sita. It's another avatar. Sita is Radha. Krishna is Ram. So in that avatar, we call them Ram and Sita. And they do the leela of getting married for their devotees, for us to enjoy. Radha and Krishna, in some of their avatar, they do a marriage leela also. And sometimes they don't. In this most recent avatar, they did a marriage leela at Bhandir Vat. A big, there's a big, huge banyan tree on the bank of Yamuna River in a forest called Bhandir Van. This tree was so big that some of its branches stretched all the way across Yamuna River. And the Gwalbals used to walk across them to get across the river. It was such a huge tree. So under that tree, in the kunj beneath that tree, Brahmaji came and performed the ceremony of Radha and Krishna's lila. He became of uh, their wedding. He became the Purohit. So it's known that this special lila happened. Only the gopis were there to witness it. It was a special private. Kunj Leela, only for the gopis. Anyway, it happens differently every time Radha and Krishna come. Sometimes it's a public wedding, Mother Yashoda and Kirti Maya, and everybody's there, all of Braj. Sometimes they don't get married at all, but it doesn't matter. Radha is Krishna, Krishna is Radha. I told you that there are many types of saints, right? So, according to the classifications of how we love Sri Krishna, even a Rasik Mahapurush who has attained Sri Krishna will be further categorized as a Dasya Bhav Rasik Mahapurush, Sakya Bhav Rasik Mahapurush, Vatsalya Bhav, Rasik Mahapurush, 
Madhurya Bhav Rasik Mahapurush. Depending whether they viewed themselves as a servant of Shri Krishna or a friend or as a parent, parental figure or as his preyasi, as his beloved and he's your beloved. So this category, categorization, it determines the type of relationship that saint has with Shri Krishna in the divine world according to how they worshipped him during their devotional period. The highest of these is Madhurya Bhav, because it includes the ras of Dasya Bhav, Sakya Bhav, Vatsalya Bhav. It's all included and more in Madhurya Bhav. Madhurya Bhav is also further categorized into three. C-class Madhurya Bhav. B class Madhurya Bhav, A class Madhurya Bhav, depending upon the level of Nishkamta. How selfless was that devotee in loving Shri Krishna? The C class Madhurya Bhav is called Sadharani Rati Madhurya Bhav. Sadharani Rati Madhurya Bhav. In Sadharani Rati Madhurya Bhav, the devotee loves Shri Krishna as their beloved. And they feel that, oh, if I get Krishna's association, if I get his love, I'll be happy. So they desire Shri Krishna. They don't desire anything of this world from him. They're not asking for any other thing. They're only desiring him. So that desire is pure. That desire is a divine desire. But there's no feeling in that of caring about what does Shri Krishna want? What would make him happy? There, there's no awareness. There's just a feeling of I would, I would be so happy if I got his love. So that makes it the lowest class of Madhuri Bhav. Sadharani Rati Madhuri Bhav. The most famous example of this is Kubja. Kubja loved Shri Krishna in this way. The next class, B class of Madhuri Bhav is called Samanjasarati Madhuri Bhav. Samanjasarati. The example of this type of devotee are the queens of Dwarika. 16,108 queens of Dwarika. They have some concern for Shri Krishna's happiness. They have some regard, like thinking, how would I make him happy? What does he want? But they also have a regard for their own happiness, like a 50-50 type of situation. So they're higher than the Sadharani Rati Madhuri Bhav devotees, but not as high as the gopis. The gopis are called Samanjasarati Madhuri Bhav gopis. Samartha, sorry. They're called Samartha Rati Madhuri Bhav. In Samartha Rati Madhuri Bhav, you only have concern for Shri Krishna's happiness. And you make no demands on him. You say, Beloved, do whatever makes you happy. Ashlishya va padartam pinashtuma madarshanan marmahatam karotuva yatha tatha va vidadhatulam pato in the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ji, as he himself was speaking as a devotee of Samartharati Madhuri Bhav, even though he himself is Shri Krishna, he says, Oh my beloved, I have a challenge for you. My challenge is, that no matter how you behave with me, my love for you will never decrease. In fact, it will go on increasing. 
Why can I make this challenge? Because my desire is for your happiness. Tat sukha sukhitvam, Narajji says. To be happy in Shri Krishna's happiness. So the Samarthārati Madhuryabhav devotees, it's not that they don't have a desire for their happiness. They do. But they want to be happy in Krishna's happiness. That's the highest happiness you can get, believe it or not. The more selfless you are, the higher bliss you get. So the gopis, the samarthārati Madhuryabhav devotees, they're only gopis. Gopis are the only example of this type of devotion. Yatha braja gopi ka naam, Naradji says in his Narad Bhakti Darshan, the only example of this highest form of bhakti is the gopis. There's no other example. So they loved Shri Krishna for his happiness. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhuji is saying, whether you embrace me, shower your affection upon me, or you tell me to get out, leave me alone, I don't want to see you, or you just ignore me, you, or you just ignore me, Pretend you don't even know me. In any of these three ways that you could choose to behave with me, my love for you is not going to change. I will say, oh, it makes you happy to ignore me? My love will increase because I want to be happy in your happiness. What makes you happy to frown at me and tell me to get lost? Okay, if that makes you happy, I'm happy. I'm as happy as if you would have embraced me. Only this type of selfless devotee can make that challenge that no matter how you behave with me, my love will go on increasing. So such saints receive the highest form of bliss and such devotees who try to adopt this type of love for Shri Krishna prog progress the most quickly. Because nothing is going to derail them. Whatever happens in their life, they'll say, if this makes you happy, I'm happy to undergo it. I'm happy in your happiness. See, a devotee who lacks selflessness would say, oh, I've been doing devotion for 20 years, crying for Shri Krishna's darshan, and he hasn't come yet, and they'll start to feel disheartened. But someone who has nishkamta, like the gopis, they'll say, yes, I want his darshan, no doubt. But if it makes him happy to give me more viraha, I'm happy in his happiness. He'll come when it pleases him. I have no demand from my side. From my side, he can keep giving me birth after birth in this world as long as I have selfless devotion to him in my heart. Na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadish kamaye mama janmani janmani shware bhavatad bhakti rahai tukim tvai Again, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ji says, Life after life, I just want ahaituki bhakti to you. Selfless devotion with no condition, no demand. I don't want to ask anything from you. I only want to be happy in your happiness. Like in the Gopi Geet, I explained that one shlok, the last shlok of Gopi Geet that melted Sri Krishna's heart when the gopis said that even when we are feeling extreme viraha and we get the chance to cool that fire of viraha in our chest by applying the sole of your lotus foot to our chest, even at that time we do so fearfully that I should not press it too hard. 
and cause even the smallest amount of discomfort to my beloved. When the desire to meet Sri Krishna is infinite, an ordinary person would not think, an ordinary person would just squeeze it. Oh, it feels so good. And you wouldn't think about it. Not the gopis. So the gopis are the samartharati madhurya bhav devotees. And this is why only gopis qualify for maharas. And many other sweet leelas of Radha Krishna, which are the private leelas of Vrindavan that happen in the Kunj leelas, Nikunj leelas, Nibhrit Nikunj leelas. But the question still stands, if gopis are the highest devotees, why did Shri Krishna leave the Samartharati Madhurya Bhav devotees in Braj and go and join the Samanjasarati Madhurya Bhav devotees in Dwarika? Why did he leave the A-class Madhurya Bhav devotees and go to the B-class Madhurya Bhav devotees? So, you already understood that that only appeared, that was apparent to us that he left and went over there. Second thing, Shri Krishna wanted to reveal that bliss that some people like a little more formality, not the pure playfulness. Okay, Shri Krishna became more formal in Mathura and even more so in Dwarika because some devotees prefer that and he wanted to reveal that type of Leela and interact with those types of saints here on earth to make those Leelas known to the people. The fact that he had 16,108 queens should not perturb you either. Because do you know how many saints of each category there are? There are infinite saints in the divine world in each of those categories. Dasyabhav saints are unlimited. Sakyabhav saints are unlimited. Vatsalyabhav saints are unlimited. Samartharati Madhuri Bhav saints, in other words, gopis are unlimited. Samanjasarati Madhuri Bhav saints are unlimited. Sadharanirati Madhuri Bhav saints are unlimited in the divine world. So in Braj also there were unlimited gopis. They weren't all married to Shri Krishna, fine, but they all had that Madhuri Bhav love for him. In Dwarika, they also all those those are saints. They're not ordinary people. Shri Krishna blessed them, graced them with that Samanjasarati Madhuri Bhav love. So they were married to him and got to live with him in a palace. Each queen had her own separate palace and Shri Krishna lived separately with each of the queens. This is also described in the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam that Shri Krishna lived in 16,108 separate palaces and simultaneously lived with each of those queens and interacted with her in the way that that queen felt in her heart. One time Naradji went to visit Shri Krishna. He was thinking that uh, one wife requires a, someone, you know, one relationship like that requires great compromise, right? To have a relationship be smooth and harmonious. Having one spouse is enough. Shri Krishna has 16,108. How does he balance all of this? It seems impossible to me. So Naradji went and he went in, first of all, in the palace of Rukmini and Shri Krishna and he was welcomed there by Shri Krishna as a respected guest. And after taking care of the formalities, seating him properly, offering, what, how can I serve you? Once all of that was done, then Shri Krishna asked Naradji, you know, you know, is there 
did you have something in mind when you came here? Is there any seva we can do for you? Oh, no, no, I see, I, uh. So then he got up and he left and he went to the palace of Satyabhama and Shri Krishna. And over there he saw Shri Krishna with Satyabhama and he was thinking, but he, I just saw him there with Rukmini. Anyway, same Natak. Oh, Narad ji, aap aaye hai, bethi aaye, aaye, nashta ali ji. All of that formality and again, Narad ji, aap kisi prayojan se aaye honge? Nay, nay, aise hi aaya hon. Utke chale gaye. Went into the palace of Kalindi and Shri Krishna. Same thing over there. So he kept visiting all the palaces and he saw Shri Krishna is in one he's eating with Rukmini, in one he's playing chess with Satyabhama, in another he's just chatting with Kalindi. In each palace he's interacting with each individual queen separately and simultaneously. So each one feels that at the end of the day Krishna comes home to me. And then in the morning, once he's ready to go to the court, all of those forms, they all meet at an intersection and merge into one form and Shri Krishna goes and takes care of his royal duties and at the end of the day when he comes back, they all emerge and he goes to all of those palaces. So all of these are saints who have earned the right to have this divine bliss from Shri Krishna. In the divine world, they're unlimited. So, aap log sola hazar ek so aat sun, sun ke ghabarate hain, to kuch nahi hai. Gopis are unlimited. The samanjasarati madhuri bhav devotees are unlimited. All the types of devotees are unlimited. So, it's nothing to be concerned about or try to like analyze and understand. Now, you, now you do know. There's a proper reason behind it, why Shri Krishna had all these queens. There's a Leela, be, Leela behind each one of them also, how it came about. So these were all devotees, saints, with a desire to have Shri Krishna as their husband. See, as Ram, a lot of maryada was required with Shri Krishna. He said, when I come as Krishna, I'm going to remove all that maryada. Someone who, anyone who wants any relationship with me, I'm going to award that. I'm going to make devotion the easiest it can be. No rules, no restrictions. Love me any way you want. So this is his supreme grace. Nevertheless, the gopis have a special place in Shri Krishna's heart because of their selflessness. So one day to reveal to the world and also to teach those samanjasarati devotees, one day Naradji came. I told you he helps Shri Krishna's leelas take the next step. Whatever Shri Krishna has in mind, Naradji will come and do something. So. One day, Naradji came and he was talking with Rukmini and the other queens and he's saying, you know, Krishna talks a lot about those gopis in Braj, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he sure does. He's always praising them. But Rukmini ji, Satyabhama ji, you're, none of you are lacking in beauty or other qualities. So, I mean, why, do, why does he do that? And in front of you as well. Praising the gopis. Naradji, you're right. We should... Iska fasla hona chahiye aaj. Should get an answer from him. So, Shri Krishna knows all of this is going on. So, he do, he's got this all planned out. He starts bellowing. Oh, oh I'm in so much pain. He, he's writhing. And all the queens come running. What's happened to our beloved? What's happened? They try all kinds of dawai. Nothing is working. And Shri Krishna is yelling more and more loudly. And they're afraid. What's going to happen to uh, my husband? 
So finally, Naradji comes and says, you know, okay, Kanahiya, what's going on here? Oh, Shri Krishna says, Naradji, what are you talking about? I'm in pain here. I feel like I'm dying. Nay, 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 Maharaj, you, you're the maker of this pain, so only you can tell what's the cure for it. Shri Krishna says, okay, Naradji, since you're asking, the cure for it is if one of my devotees gives me their foot dust and I mix it in some water and drink it, then my pain will go away. Naradji is thinking, I'm also one of his devotees. But who knows what he's got going on here, what his plan is. I don't want to get fooled again like I did that time when I got a monkey face. So I'm going to stay just on the edge of this Leela. I'm not getting that involved. But all these queens, they're all God-realized saints. They're his supreme devotees. Let me go and ask them. So he goes and asks Rukmini, Satyabhama, all the queens that, you know, you're saying you wanted to cure your beloved. He says the cure is that you give him your foot dust and he eats that or drinks that. So can you please give me some? They all refused. They said, can you imagine what a bad name we would get giving our foot dust to our Lord? our name would go down in history. We may even be sent to Narak for such a thing. So Naraji says, okay. He goes or tries to find some other saints. Anyone he finds and asks, none of them are willing to give their foot dust. So he comes back, he says, you're going to also have to tell me where to find this medicine of yours. Where is that pharmacy? <laughs> So he says, for that you have to go to Braj. You won't find that here. Go to Braj. Over there, the gopis. Talk to them. So Naradji goes to Braj and he first disguises himself as an old man. So he enters Braj walking like that with a stick. A few gopis see him. The first gopis to see him say, Naradji, why the disguise? <laughs> Naradji is thinking, what kind of place is this? I'm going to have to watch myself here. So then the gopis come and they say, uh, so do you have any news of our beloved Krishna? How is he? Naradji says his condition is very serious. He's in extreme pain. And he says the cure to his pain is the foot dust of his devotees. No more discussion. All the devotees put their feet out slightly lifting up their sari and say, Naradji, quick, take our foot dust and go and cure him. And Naradji is stunned and still is just standing there looking at them. Aren't you worried that you'll have to go to Narak for such a wrong action? Aren't you worried what people will say about you? The gopi said, Naradji, if you want to lecture us on the consequences of this, come back and do it after you give him the cure. Anyway, we don't care. We can go to Narak again. Every soul has been there uncountable times. We are happy to go to Narak again if it takes away the pain of our beloved. So Naradji now understood the greatness of Gopi's selflessness. And he collected some foot dust and first took some for himself then went back and cured Shri Krishna. And then th those queens saw, oh, the gopis, without a thought, gave their foot dust to Krishna. They're so selfless. Now we understand why he's talking about the gopis. They also had a desire to meet the gopis at that point, to meet Radharani and the gopis. Those queens of Dwarika did. And they got a chance to meet them later, but this story is coming later on. Probably not tomorrow either, but before the end of the week. We'll get to that, that meeting between the queens and Radharani and the gopis. So today you've understood the classification of different saints and how the gopis are the supreme 
topmost saints because of their selfless love for Shri Krishna. And Shri Krishna visited or, or lived in these different places and revealed his different forms in order to do different leelas and reveal the different relationships that souls could have with him. As far as the world knew, Shri Krishna had left and gone to these places, but as far as the gopis and Radha knew, he was still there with them. And yet, they were all experiencing viraha. So even though he was still there with them, gopiya apna viraha prakat kar rahi hain. Radha Rani apna viraha prakat kar rahi hain. Why are they still feeling that viraha if Shri Krishna never left them? And what did Uddhav learn from them when he came? That's where I left you yesterday. <laughs> but I promise that's where we'll start tomorrow. We'll, we'll start with Uddhav meeting the gopis. What did he learn from them? And how is he affected by meeting the gopis? Boliye Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki. Yeah.